Well, are you ready for the word tonight? Amen. I want to take you to two passages of scripture tonight. The first is found in 1 Peter. 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter one, the second is found in Psalm 100. In verse one, Father, we thank you and we bless you tonight. We give you glory and praise tonight for your word. I pray tonight that this word will go forth, that your people will be blessed. I thank you for your anointing that destroys every yoke. We get out of the way, Lord, and say, have your way. In this place, we thank you for what you're going to do. Somebody's life is gonna be transformed tonight. I believe now, God, that somebody will be set free. And we thank you right now in Jesus name amen I'm picking up in the midst of a context here so allow me to do that beginning at verse 5 of 1 Peter chapter 1 the Bible says we are kept by the power of God through faith ready to be revealed in the last time and though we greatly rejoice though now for a season if need be you are in heaven is through manifold temptations or various trials that the genuineness of your faith is much more precious than gold that perish though it be tested or tried with fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the revealing of Jesus Christ whom having not seen you love though now you do not see him yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable or inexpressible and full of glory. The Bible says in Psalm 100 and verse 1, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Well, you just look at somebody real quick, look at them, smile with all 32 or two, and just say these words to them. Tell them, hold on to your joy. That is, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord on tonight. People of God, whether you've been saved for 20 years, 20 months, 20 days, or 20 minutes, there is a universal testimony that permeates the pew in this house tonight. And it is this, that since you've been saved, the devil has seemingly picked you out to pick on you. Whenever there is something powerful at work in your life, there was an amazing purpose and destiny that God has for your life. Make no mistake about it, that your being here is not by accident. That God has orchestrated some things in your life to bring to pass your destiny and the devil got the memo. The devil cannot take from you what God has promised you, but he'll make it so difficult that you'll surrender it yourself. Now, I need you to understand that if the devil, if you're not experiencing any kind of demonic interrogation, if the devil isn't bothering you, you ought to be nervous because it is an indication that you and the devil are running in the same direction. But the moment you turn your back on the devil, somebody can be a witness that that's when all hell breaks out in your life. When destiny is being pursued, kingdom is being advanced, when you are doing what God has called you to do, make no mistake about it, dogs don't bark at parked cars. Whenever you are progressive, whenever you are moving, and that's why when you are a progressive person, you, you get irritated and agitated by trifling people. Uh, because these are the kinds of people that get under your skin because you're too busy to be playing games with them. You're going through too much. Uh, but it is interesting now in the context of this text because you have to understand that we're dealing with uh, people who are uh, going through a tremendous amount of oppression and persecution simply because of their convictions concerning the Christ. Uh, they are now left to talk about the ministry and the passion of the Christ who had been crucified and risen again and many of them are now uh, being rolled down hills and spiked barrels and some of them are being crucified upside down and burned at the stake for the cause of Christ kingdom advancement attracts unto itself demonic persecution 
But, but Peter declares tonight, and I think it's so interesting that all of us must realize that there is something different about us. That those of us who are believers have to declare that we are different. We're not like anybody else. We stand out. We have a different stance in our situation, a different posture in our pain. And the way you can tell the difference between a child of God and somebody in the world is to put them under the microscope of trial and tribulation and you'll see a difference. Uh, when the world holds their head down, we look to the hills and when cometh our help because our help comes from the Lord. When the world, when the world cries as if there is no hope, we declare that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. When somebody's on the verge of hopelessness and despair, we declare that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean uh, on Jesus' name. When the world uh, sees the glass half empty, we see the glass half full. When the world uh, sees life as a pessimistic reality, we see it in an optimistic reality. And the truth is, people look at you and they marvel and they're trying to figure out what is it that you have that causes you to be that different. Let's make no mistake about it. Even your haters and your frenemies, they are looking at you trying to figure out what is it that you have that causes you to steal give God glory when you don't know how your situation is going to turn out. What is it that you have that causes you to come in the house of God and declare that God is blessing me when my money is funny and my change is strange and my credit can't get it? What is it that you have that causes you to still declare this is the day the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it when I don't know how the doctor's report is going to turn out. But somebody needs to know that what we have, the liquor store came bottle it. What we have, the dope pusher came push it. What we have, you can't get down at the Galleria. But what we have tonight is joy. We got a revelation of God's word that is so powerful and we declare tonight that people of God, what the devil is after, he is after your joy. I've come today to declare, I know you think he's after your house, he's after your money, but he's really after the revelation of God's word in your life. But tonight somebody needs to draw a line in the sand and somebody needs to stick your chest out and declare to the devil that I'm not a rookie at this thing. I've been here before and I ain't going nowhere until I get what God has for my life. I'm holding on to my joy. Devil, you will not, you shall not, you cannot have my joy. Would you just tell somebody, hold on to your joy. I want you to understand something tonight, I really do, because I really want you to understand what Peter was declaring to us tonight, that we are kept by the power of God through faith, ready to be revealed in the last time. How do you hold on to your joy? I'm glad you asked. I need you to understand tonight the power of having something on the inside that's saved up for the off season. Uh, tell somebody you need something on the inside that's saved up for the off season. You see, people of God, it is senseless for to come in the house of God to throw together theological phrases and look sanctimonious and be the baptized bourgeois uh, to run around the church to shout to sing the sweat but have nothing to show for it the truth is is that when we come into the house of God there ought to be some principles that we can gain there ought to be some things that can sustain us so that after the benediction we are able to handle the things that we confront uh, he says this we are kept by faith watch it carefully faith cometh by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God you wondering why some people haven't lost their mind why they're hanging in there can I tell you why because of what they know and if you knew what we knew you would act like we act 
Huh, I'm gonna preach this anyhow. That's why you ought to thank God. You got a man of God uh, who preaches the unadulterated, unedited word of God uh, because somebody here knows uh, when your life is collapsing around you and drama is happening all in your situation, you know if it wasn't for the word of God, uh, you wouldn't even be here today. People of God, I'm kept by this word. I don't care how many degrees you have behind your name. There is power in this word. Somebody know all it took was just one word and it meant the difference between a breakdown and a breakthrough. Just one word meant the difference between a setback and a setup. Tell your neighbor just one word. Oh yeah, just one word. See, I know some of y'all are real deep and you can know all about biology which is the study of life but you better know the one who is life. You can know all about physics, the study of matter and energy and their interaction but you better know about the God that swooped down from the dust and made man in his own image and declared that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I know you know all about astrology, the study of stars but you better know about that star that shone in Bethlehem some 2,000 years ago go that brought the redeemer into the world you can know the British Norches of Spanish the Quella Attils of French you can know the Guten Talks of German you can know the Alpha Beta Gamma Delta Epsilon Zeta Eta Theta Iota Gamma Lambda Mu Nu Zioma Chrome Pyro Sigma Tau Epsilon Phi Chi Psi and Omega of the Greek alphabet but this wood I'm preaching behind will deteriorate this water in this bottle will evaporate the car you drove here will depreciate the money in your pocket will devour your weight your friendships will eradicate the grass withers the flower fades heaven and earth will pass away but this word will last for ever tell somebody I thank God for the word I am kept by a word what he declares is so powerful that we are kept by faith ready to be revealed in the last time. That I have to know something. That, that I gotta know that seasons are going to change. Just because everybody's smiling in my face today doesn't mean they're gonna smile in my face tomorrow. Just because I'm up today don't mean I'm gonna be up tomorrow. That's why you better be careful how you treat people when they're going through because everybody gets a turn. I'm gonna preach this in a how. Oh my God. Listen, people of God. But listen, when the season changes, you have to be able to delineate, to discern between happiness and joy. You see, because there are many of us who are so gung ho on happiness, but all happiness is, is an external stimuli creating an internal response. Somebody gives you flowers, you happy. Somebody tells you you sing good, you happy. Somebody tells you you cute, you get happy. But check it out. Joy is not based on an external stimuli. Joy is based on an internal revelation. And so if nobody ever invites you out, you'll shine your own shoes. You'll take yourself out. It's cheaper anyhow. When the doctor gives you a bad report, you will say, Doctor, I appreciate your report, but he was wounded for my transgression, bruised for my iniquity, and by his stripes, I am healed. Tell somebody I got something on the inside. And this is why you cannot, you cannot miss revelation. Because often we defer word to people saying, I wish so and so had been here to hear this. Because just because you're not going through it now doesn't make it applicable to you. You better do like grandmama say, put it in the deep freeze. Because one day you're going to have to throw it out. Oh, I feel like preaching up in here tonight. We are kept by faith, a revelation that's ready. Somebody say this word is ready. Say it again, this word is ready. 
See, it's ready when the season changes. When I when I grew up, when I grew up, we didn't we didn't have Game Boy. Well, we didn't have Game Boy. We didn't have all that Xbox. We didn't Xbox. Now, when I grew up, uh, we had this little toy. I want to tell you about it. Some of y'all may not remember this, but it was from Mattel. It was called the C and Say. Uh, I got some witnesses out there. Anybody remember this? Let me tell you what a C and Say was. It was a, a round box and it had a string with an arrow and when you would pull the string the arrow would turn and so it would tell you it would educate a child on the noises or sounds of particular animals and so when you would pull the string it would say this is what a dog sounds like this is what a sheep sounds like but engineers at Mattel program word inside of the CNC and the only way to get the word out was to pull the string some people look at you and they take you for granted because you bring coffee to the office and you smile and you turn the other cheek and you just walk in saying oh praise the Lord but look at your neighbor say but if you pull my string you're going to find out how much word I got in me. So I had a witness up in here tonight. Devil messing with your money. You didn't pull the wrong string. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. You messing with my mind. You didn't pull the wrong string. Thou will keep me in perfect peace whose mind is saved. Hey, hey, hey. We are, we are, listen, we are, we are kept by faith. Ready to be revealed. Ready to be revealed. Ready to be revealed. But he says, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold trials. Different kinds of trials. Uh, that the trial of your faith is more precious than gold that perish. Though it be tried with fire might be found unto praise glory and honor unto jesus christ here it is that, that, that god intentionally tests your faith to bring integrity to your testimony god by his sovereignty, he does whatever he wants to do, to whom he wants to do it, how he wants to do it, where he wants to do it, and he doesn't owe anybody an explanation as to why he does what he does. He's just God like that. And God navigates your life through a series of events he knows you would never volunteer for. That's why he didn't ask you. But he will take you through some things. And he takes you through these things for a reason. He takes you through them in order to bring validity and credibility. And he takes you through these things to authenticate your testimony because you don't have any validity or substance to your testimony unless you have been through what you tell in other folk. They can make it through. How you going to tell me to hold on with no money in my pocket if you've always had a silver spoon in your mouth? How you going to tell me, oh, it's just minor surgery if you ain't never been through what I'm going through? And so when you walk through the annals of biblical antiquity, you see the great cloud of witnesses. You begin to realize that what gives credibility to their testimony is that they have gone through what they're telling us. We can make it through. And what? Peter declares uh, is that the trying of your faith is necessary to bring integrity to your testimony. Because listen, people of God, when God takes you through the fire, he likens it unto being tried by fire like gold. You know the way you can tell the difference between real gold and fake gold? It all looks the same. If somebody has it on, it looks the same. But if you ever get caught in a storm, 
When a storm hits fake gold, it starts turning colors. And the reason why it turns colors, because it didn't stay in the heat like real a lot of folks shouting up in here a lot of folks looking like they the real deal but if you want to know who the real saints are you watch them go through a storm there is something amazing in this about going through the heat something amazing I just want to testify I I and some of you meeting me for the first time. But my, my testimony, see, because you got to know when you see people, you have to understand people just don't show up. They got a story. Yeah. Been through the fire, see? Yeah. I was a little boy, and I watched my, I'm going to bless you, because there's something in you, and God wants to see it elevate. He wants to see it come to fruition. And I was, and I was a little boy, and my, my, my grandmother had an oven with a little window in it. And... You know that other with the little window in it, and she would make cake, and we'd be so anxious, we want to open the oven up, but the oven was an environment, pressured environment of heat, so that 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 was in the cake would rise. We'd want to take the cake out before the process was complete. But grandmother said, baby, you can look, but don't touch, because if you take it out, What's in it can't come. I'm trying to help somebody. And that's why I don't always try to ask God to deliver people out of stuff he's developing them in. Sometimes you got to stay in there. And God is just peeping through the window, just waiting to see how you're going to rise through the fire. I'm going to help somebody up in here tonight. Other folk looking at you who don't even like you, but they looking to the one that's trying to see. Are you going to rise? Touch your neighbor and say, I'm coming out through this. Tell them, I'm going through another level through this. Just want to testify. The year 2003, I, I, I sat in the doctor's office uh, with my, my wife. I sat in the doctor's office with my wife, and, uh, and my wife uh, had a biopsy. We were told by the doctor. That uh, when he came out, she was still under. The doctor came, looked at me, and said, uh, Pastor, your wife has a rare form of neuroendocrine pancreatic cancer. I said, Are you kidding me? I said, yeah, he said, It doesn't look well, Pastor. We're going to do the best we can to fight, but you know, there's a five year survival rate of less than 10%. I said, Are you kidding me? 30, my wife was, at that time, we were in our 30s. Our church at that time was 20,000 people. God was blessing us and just doing great things. And man, and she came to, I had to tell her what was going on, and, and here I was now going through this whole, this whole paradox now, going through the fire, preaching to God's people, and then going home to the fire. Nobody knew what I was dealing with. Sometimes coming to preach on 30 minutes of sleep because I've been up all night watching her, giving her morphine, and watching her deteriorate, and watching other people get healed in service. And it wasn't happening for me at home. And here I was, Sunday morning, January 17, 2005, 37 years old. Went to the hospital that Sunday morning, as I always would when she was in. And I would go and pray for her, and the nurse told me, stay, 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 don't leave today, don't leave today. And at 11 o'clock on that Sunday morning, she went home to be with the Lord. And I stood there and cried and went to the window and said, Lord, why, why, why is this happening to me? Lord, what's this about? And then the devil came because see, when the devil gets you in isolation, he starts interrogation. And the devil said, what you going to preach now, preacher? You've been around here talking about God's a healer. God can make a way. What you going to tell God's people now? And I was crying and I was broken, but I said, wait a minute now, devil. I may be wounded, but I ain't no fool. I know who my God is and I know I'm hurting but I declared on that day I look right at the devil and I declare the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away but I'll still bless his just talking about in the fire buried, buried, buried my wife 
In January of 2005, three years, man, I was just a single pastor out there. Your pastor and so many others were just so, so encouraging to me, just trying to find myself, get myself back. And I built a new home in 2008, and I'd gone out of the country. And I really hadn't even been in the home but a couple of weeks. And I was out of the country. I came back in, and as soon as my plane hit Miami, Florida, my phone rang. It was my neighbor saying, your house is on fire. I said, what? Yeah, your house is on fire. I'm talking about the fire now. <laughs> and uh, I said, what are you talking about? There was a lightning storm in Nashville. Out of all the houses in Nashville to get hit by lightning, it was my house. Here I was literally on a Saturday coming back to my church. Didn't have nowhere to stay. They put me up in a hotel. I had to get socks from Walgreens across the street from one of my locations. And my armor bearers and my deacons, and they were just praying and worried about me. And I was in my office, and here comes the devil again saying, what you going to do now, preacher? That wasn't even me. That was an act of God. What you going to say this morning? I pulled myself together and told the devil, look, I tried to send you back to hell three years ago, but let me send you good for now. I said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. You see, we got some people up in here today who understand that when you go through the fire, you coming out not as a testimony, but you coming out with a real testimony. Because when you've been through, when you've been dog dragged down, so broke you didn't know where your next dime was coming from, when you had to scrape change out of the couch to catch the bus, when you didn't know how you were going to make it and you were so sick, you were moved from test to lying to show not testifying because God will take you through a test and God will take you through that test and he will leave you there until you almost break you'll pray and you cry but God will leave you there you prayed and you cried but God leaves you there the question is why doesn't God bring me out when I want to come out can I tell you why God doesn't do that because God knows you would suffer from anthropomorphic arrogance God knows that if he brought you out when you wanted to come out your nose would be so big that you would come into church with your nose so wide open that if it rained you would drown talking about look what I did look what I did so God leaves you in the test until your money can't buy you out until your degree can't think you out until your friends can't bail you out so that when you do come out you'll say it wasn't my money it wasn't my family it wasn't my friends but it was nobody but Look at your neighbors. I thank God for the tests. I thank you for my mountains. I thank you for my valleys. I thank you for the storms you brought me through. If I never had a problem, I wouldn't know what faith in your word could do. But through it all, I've learned how to lean and depend on you. I've had good days, bad days, hills to climb. But when I look around, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. I won't come. But has God been good to anybody up in here that... Tell somebody, hold on to your joy. Listen, that's one more thing and I'm out of here. That's one more thing and I'm out of here. Peter says something that captivated me. I'm done. It's captivated me. You know, we, he said, whom we have not seen, we love. <laughs> Though now we see him not, we still believe. We rejoice with joy unspeakable or inexpressible and full of glory. Huh. I, I, I've never, uh, even though we can't see God, God's got some indicators of his presence. <laughs> that when we make contact with those indicators, our joy becomes inexpressible. I've never seen the wind, but the leaves are testifying. I've never seen the gas in my automobile, but I got an indicator that lets me know the gas is right there. And when you've had your own set of experiences apart from 
proselytization and apart from being catechized by some denominational affiliation. I'm talking about when you've had your own set of experiences with God that you don't need nobody else to tell you who God is. You have gone through enough stuff for yourself that you know God is a tuition payer, gas in your car, food on your table. I'm telling you, you know what God did for you. Your joy will translate itself into noise. Peter says it's unspeakable. David said make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye land. Some people have a fundamental problem with noise. I don't know where you're going if you live on any street in Houston. There's some noise coming up and down your street. If you die and go to hell, that's going to be gnashing of teeth, noise. And if you're trying to get out of here with us and go to heaven, every day going to be the Sabbath. It'll have no end. Pastor, I have felt, I have felt responsible as a theologian of a generation of new preachers, you see, to help people who are uncomfortable with our charismatic expressions of gratitude. I felt the need to do a theological apology to explain to people why we act like we act. See, I've seen this in my church. I've seen the transformation. My church, when I got there, was the first church of refrigeration. People were just proud to sit there stoic, unmoved by anything, hoping the word would come down like the sun and break the ice. And it comes out of a historical construct of people who come to these churches and who had become affluent with their degrees and their jobs, and they turned our churches into silk stocking churches. That we were no longer fishers of men, we were keepers of the aquarium. <laughs> we, 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 we had reserved seating for the biggest payers. And people would sit there and they would be dignified and they would say, Shh, that's too loud, Rep, and that's too much. And they want to sit there because we don't act like that because we're, we're educated. We are affluent people. We, and they look down their glasses at you when you would raise your hand and say hallelujah and make you feel uncomfortable because, uh, because they were affluent. They had degrees behind their name. And so now it has become somewhat of a paradox, a conflict of culture, if you will, that now that generation is trying to figure out why many of us in our generation who are educated with the same degrees in the same social economic status and who act a fool like we do it's simply because we remember being broke in the financial aid line we remember where the Lord brought us from oh my God can I preach this like I feel need to. I, I got to go to my seat. I'm done. But I need to give you a definition of noise so you don't think that we're just uh, have a zeal without knowledge. Let me tell you what noise is. Noise is information that I'm trying to articulate It's information that I'm trying to communicate. But when I try to communicate it, it comes up on the other side of articulation. Information 
that I'm trying to communicate. But when I try to communicate it, it comes up on the other side of articulation. I grew up in the Mount Canaan Baptist Church of Shreveport, Louisiana. We had on the mother's board back then a lady named Miss Pearlene Jones. She died a few years ago. She was 98 years old. She had a sixth grade education. She couldn't read, but she knew the Bible. When I was the church drummer, I was the church percussionist as a kid. And we were in the musician. We, we didn't have, we, we didn't know. We were just having fun as kids, you see. And we look at those women. Those were the women you respected. You, the mothers with those white, thick stockings on, those gloves. And you wouldn't dare get up and walk because they pinch you and tell you to sit down. But they were praying women. They'd be moaning when the preacher was preaching. Praying women. Mother Pearlie and Jones would do something, and it was, it was kind of amazing because it would, be, it would really be prompted by what we would do in the band. I was the drummer, and so the musicians would look at me and say, let's do it, let's do it, because we were just kids. We wanted to see Mother Pearlie and Jones do this thing. <laughs> so I would get it going, you see. I would get it going. Let's get it, let's get it. Let's stir this thing up. And Mother Pearlie and Jones, sure enough, would stand up, fold her arms, and she'd say, oh! Uh! That was the funniest thing in the world to a brother. I mean, we just love it. Let's do it again. Mother Pearlie and Jones would just say, oh. But when I came to know God for myself, I found out that in that oh was something that God had done for Mother Jones that she was trying to communicate. But when she tried to tell us about it, nouns and verbs were not enough. Syntax and grammar were not enough. That the only thing that could come out of her mouth was some noise. Somebody tonight, when you look at what God did in your life, you look at how far God brought you, look at your neighbor, tell them this should not be a quiet pew. Tell them because God's been too good. I haven't been saved all my life. I know some of you been saved all your life. But that ain't my testimony. I haven't been saved all my life. Let me close by telling you, when I was at Southern University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, I was what they called a party animal. You see, I was a Q sci-fi to the day I die. You see, I was that Q dog that had the camouflage pants, had the purple bandana on. Yeah, that was me with the gold boots and the purple shoestrings. And you see, we would go to the party and we go to the party. The party would start at seven o'clock, but the cues wouldn't get there to midnight. Now, I know some of you don't have no concept of what I'm talking about because you've been saved all your life. But look at your neighbor, tell him, I think I know what he's talking about. We would go to the party. We had to let the alphas go in first. We had to let the kappas go be pretty. We had to let the sigmas take out the buffet. But the party didn't start till the cues got there. We'd walk into the party and the DJ would be bumping the music. But I was the lead cue dog. And I would walk in and see people sitting around the wall. AKAs looking cute over by the wall. Deltas over there dancing with each other. I said, wait a minute. So I was the lead cue dog. So I went to the DJ and I took the microphone and I said, hold up, Mr. DJ. I got an announcement to make. I say, y'all, we came in here and we paid too much money to sit around the wall. I said, let's get this party started right. I'm going back to Nashville, but I believe somebody, when you come into Wheeler Avenue and you see somebody sitting around looking cute, you need to tell them, wait a minute, Jesus paid too much for you to sit right there. Let's get this worship started right. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries hallelujah. I thank God 
for saving me. And I'm looking for somebody tonight. The devil's had you under attack. The devil's been trying to take you out. But tonight, I'm looking for the noisy section. I'm looking for somebody who will break protocol tonight. Somebody, when you think about how far God brought you, somebody who can forget about what you got on. If you got to pin your weave back, raise your voice, open up your mouth, and give God some noise. In Come on, give him praise in this place. Come on, give him glory in this place. Come on, open up your mouth and give God praise. Now you know the devil's been attacking some of you. So I need to teach you how to speak to the devil. Because somebody was on the verge of giving up. But tonight I want you to take your finger like you got an attitude. And say, devil, you tried to destroy me. You tried to take me out. But you made one mistake. You let me get here tonight. You should have killed me when you had me. But since I'm here, since I'm here, since I'm here, I'm going to pray. Somebody give me prayer. Hallelujah. I want you to I want you to reach over and grab the hand of that person next to you. I want you to stretch across the aisle. Stretch, stretch, stretch. I want you to squeeze that hand. I just want to I just want to leave this with you. Squeeze that hand and tell that neighbor, that's what a miracle feels like. Tell him I don't have time to explain it, but trust me, that's what a miracle feels. The devil's been attacking your joy. Sometimes you don't have to be doing anything but what God told you to do. And the enemy will come in like a flood. But you got a revelation inside of you. Saved up for the off season. God is tempering your testimony, bringing integrity to it. And every now and then, you got to speak to that devil when he comes. You got to remind yourself. I want you to hear the words of this song. Hallelujah. Squeeze that hand. Tell your neighbor the devil is a liar. The devil. <laughs> I want you to hear this. He's a liar. Listen. He's a liar. Listen, listen. He's a deceiver. I want you to hear this. He's a deceiver. I just want you to hear this. I'm going to my seat. He's a deceiver a too. Deceiver. Now, would you look at that too. person on your right and just look at them square in the eye and tell them God's not through blessing you. God. It's not through. Come on, it's tell them. not through. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. Blessing you. Blessing hey, hey. you. Feel the anointing in this house. Feel the power of God. Oh, I know what it felt like. You were, you were waiting. Come on, I know. You've I know, been I waiting know, I know, on a blessing. Anybody ever been there and it seemed like it wasn't going to come? And it seems <laughs> that it just won't come. Woo. Every which way you went, the doors were shut. The doors were shut. Things got so rough. Things <laughs> are rough. And then you had people start giving up on you. It's over for you. It's over for and you. It the devil starts interrogating you. That's what he's been doing to somebody late in the midnight hour. But remind your neighbor. Tell him, remember this. Remember this. Remember this. The devil. But the devil. Hey, hey, hey. He's a what? He's a what? He is a liar. He's a deceiver. He's a deceiver. He's a deceiver. Deceiver. I believe I got a witness out there. Too. And when you take that same hand, lay it on yourself. Come on. Lay it on yourself and prophesy. And just say, God, God is hey. not through. Come on. Come on. Come is on. Not come on. Through. Speak it over your own life. Come on. Bless 
blessing you. Blessing you. Would you go and find five people? Give them a hug and tell them God's not through blessing you. Tell them God's not through blessing you. God, come on, tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Come on, tell them. Is not through. Come on, tell them. Through. Tell them. Come on, tell them. Dry your eyes. Hold your head up. Blessing you. Blessing you. Don't you give up. Don't you give in. Tell them, God. Come on, tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. He's not through. He's not through. Hey, 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 hey. Blessing you. Somebody came here tonight. You need to know this. Whatever. What, what, whatever. I believe I got a witness out there. Whatever the Lord promised. Whatever he promised. Anybody know he's able? He's able. He's able. He's able to do. Hey, 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 hey. God. Is not through. God is not through. Come on, say it. No, say no, it. no. Say it. Say it. No, say it. no, say it. no. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Hey. It's not through. God is not through. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, oh, oh. God. God is not through. No, 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 no. Hey, 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 hey. I dare you to give him praise now. I dare you to give him praise now. Hallelujah. I dare you to open up your mouth. Glory. I dare you to start a tremble in this place. Glory. I dare you to give God glory. glory. I dare you to declare victory over your life. Woo. I dare you to declare your best days are ahead of you. Glory. And your worst days are over. Oh. Somebody open up your mouth and give Woo. God glory. Oh. Somebody yeah. give God praise. Somebody tonight. Somebody tonight. Hey. 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 Oh, yeah. Look at your neighbor real quick and tell him, excuse me. Excuse me. Tell him, I'm sorry you sat next to the craziest person in this place.